29 vertical recoil out of the M4A1 is absolutely crazy and that's why this gun and this build is probably the best gun in Escape from Tarkov. We take a closer look today. Dear comrades, Ivan the German is back for you guys and today I have another build video in Escape from Tarkov and we take a closer look about the M4A1, a crazy build in Escape from Tarkov and maybe this build will improve your PvP experience or your lapse experience or if you try to hunt some raiders or scav bosses. So we take a closer look as I said about this build and I have several variations about my certain build and some more information about ammunition and magazines. So let's start with the basic build. It's a 20 inch AR-15 build so you can shoot fully automatic. I know it's very expensive but in terms of the best build, ruble and money shouldn't be a matter of fact. So we take a close look about the best and slot items and some variations. If recoil is the most important thing for you, you should use this build. As you can see right here, 29 recoil. And I will point out some mistakes a lot of player made. Many people are using the monster suppressor. It's a little bit shorter compared to the blackout, but the blackout suppressor is better in my opinion. So as you can see, if you compare both suppressor, we have 30 recoil and 45 ergonomics. So and as you can see right here with the blackout supp suppressor, you have 29 recoil. So it's still one recoil less. And as I said, that's the best in slot thing. Furthermore, a lot of people are using the PSG-1. The PSG-1 is completely similar to the Graal S, so that's why you can use the Graal S. The recoil thing, and that's what I mean if recoil is important for you, you have to use the RK-2 with the RK-1. We have a little bit more recoil, but also better ergonomics. And if ergonomics are very important for you, so you should use the shift grip. That's are the best in slot items. I would use either the shift grip or the RK-2. For the scope, I didn't put any scope on this weapon because scope is really personal thing. You should play what you want. Let's talk about real quick about some mixed builds. What I use. So this build right right here is a 37 vertical recoil but 68 ergonomics. And this build right here is also a normal M4 A1. And what you can do is and the benefit of this build it's quite shorter. It's only a 370 millimeter AR barrel with my blackout suppressor. And a very important factor, if you're using the Moe stock, you should buy the rubber butt pad. But look at the stats. You have four more recoil and minus two ergonomics. Use the rubber butt pad. It's very important. Furthermore, you can change the grip if you want for the shift grip. So you have 80 ergonomics and 40 recoil, which is still pretty insane. So for me, it's important that you are understanding how to build your most favorite weapon. And as I said, if recoil is important for you, use this build over here. It is very expensive, but it's also very powerful. Another thing is you can build another AR-15 build with the RSRSS rail. And the RSRSS rail isn't that bad in my opinion, especially if you're using a 370 millimeter AR barrel. It's a cheaper rail, uh, so you can use it, of course. But very important factor is ammunition, of course. So the ammunition is a big point over here. A lot of players are shooting the M856A1. But this round, compared to the M855A1, has a little bit more damage, but less penetration. That's why I like, most of the times, the M855A1. Because if you compare price to effectiveness, this is the best bullet, in my opinion. But if the ruble doesn't matter to you, M995 is crazy good because you have such a high armor penetration. You are shooting 800 rounds with almost no recoil in the minute. So M995 is shredding a lot, especially if you're playing laps or whatever. This bullet is shredding. And don't forget the bullet velocity. You have over 1000 meters per second, which is crazy. Especially if you want to go for shooter bar in heaven. Use a 20 inch AR-15 with some short dot scopes or whatever. But if you want to really go out PvP or whatever, use a canted PK-06 or some EOTEX or whatever with no loss in ergonomics. All of these mechs are pretty good. But in my opinion, let's start with the first one. It's a standard gen 3 p mech. You have just minus three ergonomics, nothing else. Let's compare it to the little bit better one. 
you have a 35% check multiplier. That means you are 35% faster in checking how many bullets you have left in your mech. A really nice magazine is the Troy Battle Mech because you have a minus 10% load unload speed modifier, which is very good, and only minus two ergonomics. The Troy Mac, in my opinion, is pretty good and underrated. I don't see them very often on the battlefield. Furthermore, let's compare the both 60 rounders. In my opinion, it's pretty clear which one you should choose. Yes, with the grayish version, you have minus 18 ergonomics and with the with the Magpul, only minus 16, but check that out. 60% load unload speed modifier and only plus 20% with the normal Stanek grayish magazine. So that's why right now I'm going for the normal Stanek 60 rounders because especially on laps, you have to shoot a lot against Raiders or whatever. That's why it can happen that you have to reload your magazine. So that's why I would use a combination of these three magazines the Battle Mac and the Grayish 60 version. So down the range, let's start with the 29 recoil build, 60 rounds, no recoil control. Let's go. That was no recoil control. Let's give it another one. And guys, this is no recoil control, that's pretty insane. Let's continue with the balance build, also 60 rounds, no recoil control. So, as you can see right now, there is a little bit of difference, but not that much. Let's try it out with recoil control. First one is the 29 vertical recoil. As you can see, this machine is absolutely deadly. So, f so a quick tip for the M4, you can see this jump over here. If you're shooting some bursts, you have to compare those. So if you're shooting some, so you have to compare the initial recoil of the first rounds. So what I mean is basically this, pull your mouse during the first shots quite hard and you can control the recoil quite easy. I will show it again. Only the first few rounds are pretty hard to control and after that it's easy. That's why pull your mouse a little bit harder during the first rounds. So, pretty easy. Let's compare it with the balanced version. Also 60 rounds with recoil control. And as you can see, you have a little bit more jumpiness in the gun. So let's compare the stats real quick. We have a 27 ergo, 29 recoil with the 20 inch version and 50 ergo and 37 recoil with the balanced version, which is pretty neat if you go for some CQB compared with some longer range situations. So some more tips with the AR-15. In my opinion, it's very important to shoot the right ammunition. So what that means is I wouldn't go for 855. If you can afford or if you can modify your AR-15 probably means some right recoil and ergonomic modifications and use some proper ammunition. So during the time of the wipe, you don't need an AR. You are way better with some SMGs like the MP5, the Zyga 9 or whatever. Or if you can't afford a proper ammunition, you don't have to spend a lot into your modification of your guns because there should be a right balance between modifications on the gun and some proper ammunition. I would rather go with some shady modified weapon with very good ammunition instead of some very good modified gun with shady ammunition. So what that means like my build with some 855 or 856 is completely crap. Ammunition is very important to escape from Tarkov. That's why if you can't afford the right ammunition, as you said, do not play the AR. I would go for some SMGs or basic AKs or SKS or whatever first. And if you can if you can afford modifications and ammunition, then pick it up. Furthermore, if you can use and train your fully automatic skills for PvP or for whatever, the AR-15 is a pretty neat build if you push and if you play aggressive because you have 60 rounds 
straight forward into your enemy and as you can see how good you can compare the recoil and how good you can add some ergonomics. Especially the 370mm build is perfect for almost every situation. This is my go-to if I do not know what's going to happen, especially laps or like custom storms or reserve you can go with this build but the 29 recoil is as I said very crazy. And that's why in my opinion the AR-15 is the best gun is an escape from Tarkov right now because if you go for the HK416 it has a little bit more recoil but you have 50 more rounds per minute that means you have 850 rounds per minute that's why maybe a lot of players like the 416. So guys if you have any questions about guns modifications or recoil write it in the comments below and I'm very interested about what's your most favorite gun in escape from Tarkov right now.